Before we get started, we're having children's church today. So if all the children would meet the teachers in the back. We have children's church today. That song means something. If you're going through anything. Come on now. Whether you tell somebody else or you tell God, even if you haven't even told him, he already knows. yesterday at our sister's home going and uh, then I asked Marie I said well she said what you, what you preaching to I said 23rd Psalm he said okay I got you you, you have me sister Shirley that's for you that's for you you're not alone But I'm telling you now, the mercy of the Lord endures forever. Let us pray. Father God, I come now. I'm so full because of what you've done for me. Because it's personal, Lord. It's personal. I can't tell what he's done for others, but I can tell you what you've done for me. But I ain't nobody special, Lord. No more special than anyone else. And you took the time to draw me close to you and save my soul. So allow me to honor you this day by sharing the word that you've given me. May you give them ears to hear and hearts to believe. And it's in Jesus' name, amen. You know, this is probably one of the most recited, memorized scriptures in the Bible. It's one of them. And I'm telling you, it is personal, Amen. personal. But when we read it in the Bible, we have to remember who wrote this. What did he go through? What did he go through? We all have our own testimony. This is David's. So let's, 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 let's talk about this for a minute, a little bit about David. David was the youngest of eight sons of Jesse. As they would say, he is the least. Not only the youngest, he wasn't, he wasn't very big. He wasn't, you know, big in stature. He, you know, he, he was a nobody. Now you can remember he was in the fields tending the sheep. And his father sent word back to him and said, look, I need you to come home right now. Now I know if you, if, 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 if you, can, if you can imagine when your mother or father called you and said, I need you home right now. He said, what did I do? What have I done wrong this time? He comes and they introduce him to Samuel. He's the prophet. And he says, you the one. He said, what you talking about, Willis? He said, you're going to be the next king of Israel. Now, can you, I mean, he's laying this heavy burden on this kid. 
I can't, I can't even imagine what he, would, what, what he was thinking. You know, I, sometimes we, we read this stuff and, and we don't give these, these, these biblical uh, uh, characters emotions. And they have them. I'm sure he's talking about, you don't know what you're talking about. But something happened. It said that when Samuel anointed him, he says, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him from then on. From then on. So now you can, you, we, we can understand why David did some of the things that he did, how he was bold against Goliath and, and all these other things that he, that he did and, that made him special, made him stand out. But what David didn't know, that with that mantle, with that anointing, came some stuff. Came some stuff. The same kind of stuff that plagues us today as individuals. David ran for his life. Have you ever ran for your life? I'm talking about for years. Saul was after him. Sent the armies out after him. He had to hide among other nations, even among their, his enemies. He, he ran and, and, and stayed in, 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 the, in, in the country of, of the Philistines. So, but God was preparing him for something. See, for the mantle he put on him to be king, and, 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 and first and foremost, he anointed him king, and they, they already had a king. But God had already disqualified him. So this, this 23rd Psalm, let's start at the first verse. The Lord, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. The Lord. David had to learn that he is serving the Lord. All caps. Yahweh. He's serving the Lord. And then he made it personal. There's my shepherd. And David knew something about shepherding because he, was, he shepherded his father's flock. He knew what he had to do, what, you know, he had to protect them. He had to uh, 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 allow them to, to, to go to green pastures where they could feed, protect them from the, from the predators and all that. But David had to learn to trust the Lord. Just like you and me. If you didn't go through what you've been through, you would not trust the Lord. We are, we, 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 we aren't, we're, 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 we learn by experience. Mm -hmm. So if I never went anything, through anything or you never went through anything, well, I'll put it this way. For you fathers out there, you, you play with your little kids and, you, and, 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 and they're on the side of the swimming pool and you're in there, you say, all right, jump. I got you. Jump. I don't know. Come on. Daddy got you. Daddy got you. Then you jump, and daddy got you. From then on, you don't even hesitate. That's how God wanted David, and he wants us to react to what he says. Don't think about it. Trust me. Don't think about it. And then David goes on to verse 1. He says, I shall not want. Now, we always say God meets all our needs. He's all that we need. He's our all in all. But do we act like it? Do we really, truly believe that he's got us? See, it's not until he puts us to the test. How much do you trust me? How much do you, do, do you really believe what you read? Do you, do you really believe what you recite? And I'm here to tell you, we don't always pass the test. We don't always pass, simply because of doubt. Even though God has proven himself over and over and over and over again, there's still a part of us 
that I don't know about this. Because see, one thing God does is this. You passed the test last week. Well, it's going to be a new test. It's going to be a little bit harder. And he's doing it for a reason. Faith needs to be strengthened. See, because, you know, each and every one of us have a, all the faith we're ever going to get. But we can make it stronger. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. It's about quality. Then he goes on in verse 2. He says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. See, in this, God meets our spiritual needs. He knew we were in need of a savior, and he sent him. But David didn't know Jesus. Jesus hadn't come yet. He was looking forward to the Messiah coming. But now that we studied and we know, Jesus was always there. The triune God was always there. It was a part of, part of Yahweh. So, Christ was leading him to greener pastures. He gave him peace. A savior. He restored his soul. Verse 3 says, he restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. What is that? He helps you do what he's asked you to do. See, he knows you can't do it. He wants you to know you can't do it. See, we, we don't, we, 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 we at times get full of ourselves. And what's the favorite word? I got this. I got this. Well, what you got is getting ready to fall into a hole. Pride cometh before a fall. And it's about the, it's not about just the big things. Matter of fact, it's the small stuff that trips us up. The big things, thou shalt not kill. Oh, I, ain't, I ain't kill nobody. But then we wag our tongues and we assassinate somebody's character. So God has to continually test us to show us where we are. He already knows. I can imagine, again, David, when they told him he was going to be king, he doubted. But once he was anointed, that's when he stood up to Goliath. Not before. He stood up to the lion and the bear to protect the sheep. But God had him then. But to go up against this uncircumcised Philistine, talking all this smack about what he going to do to Israel. David took that personal. And he slew him. God will meet, in verse 3, God will meet our directional needs. He shall direct our path and make it straight. The only reason it gets bumpy, the only reason it gets, we get off course is when we interject us. I, we can go back to Abraham. He says, get out of your father's country and his house and go to a country I'm going to show you. He didn't give him all the details. Why? Because if, we, if God told us everything that we were going to go through in life, you wouldn't show up. You wouldn't show up. That's one of the great things about our Lord and Savior is that he knew when he was going to die, how he was going to die, and he still showed up. Still showed up. Still showed up. Thanks be to God. So God meets our directional needs, and why does he do it? To bring him glory. We always say, Lord has brought me a mighty long way. Well, if he hadn't done that, you wouldn't give me no glory. And sometimes we still don't. Hey, y'all, y'all see what I did? 
See, we, 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 we vacillate between being dependent on him and being independent of him. That's what we, we, we go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And God says, no, I need you to stand on the solid rock. I need you to stand on what you know is true, what has been proven to you, not, not just what you've, what you've heard, but what I've done. See, it's one thing to read all these accounts. and I don't, I don't know David. I know about David. That's why it has to be personal, y'all. We have to have our own relationship with God through Christ so that we will know for ourselves. Uh -huh. People, pe there's some things that people ask me, you know what, I can't, I, I can't explain it. I don't know, but I believe it. I'm not a theologian. I'm, 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 I'm saved by grace like the rest of y'all. I don't, I, don't, I don't know everything, but I know what God's done for me. That's what makes him real. Because we, 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 again, we can study and study and study and study. Just because I study uh, math don't mean I understand it. <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> you know? Amen. And, so, and, so, and so I'm a visual learner. I'm a... Uh, I, 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 wanna, I need to put my hands on it. I need to touch it. I need to experience it. That's right. Experience it. So he restores my soul. He gives, uh, guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. That's why we need to, everything that God does for us, every direction he takes us in, the ancient Israelites used to make markers. When something great happened, they built a monument so that they wouldn't forget. We need to start building monuments in our, in our spirits, in our minds, so that we don't forget what God has done for us. We, we, we need to do that. Because you know what? We have short-term memory loss. Come on now. We don't remember what God's, you know, what he's done for us yesterday, let alone five or six, seven years ago, because God says, new mercies, so he's going to take care of you every day today. Verse 4 says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you know, y'all, y'all have an enemy and I ain't talking about the devil, I'm talking about you. You your worst enemy. You your worst, I ain't talking about the devil. See, the devil, the devil gets, gets a lot of credit with it that, that, that he ain't do. It's us. Every time we tend to make up our mind, I'm going to do it my way. Yep. We are our worst enemy. We, 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 you know, again, we forget all the all the all the all the things that he's 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 shown us and taught us, and work and it worked. Uh, but this time, I think I, I I got this. No, you don't. No, you don't. And the thing we have to say, understand in this verse is that it says it says through the valley of the shadow of death. That means it's 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 not real. We talk now that we do have an enemy, Satan. We do have an enemy. We also have uh, uh, our, ourselves, our flesh, the world. None of these things have any power over us because Jesus said, I've overcome the world. He's conquered death and the grave. He's, and we have what David didn't have, although he, it says he, when he was anointed, the, the, the Holy Spirit came upon him all the time. But we have the Holy Spirit in us. Now, come on. Now, you know, I mean, uh, the, the Holy Spirit came upon uh, Samson, and he slew hundreds and hundreds of men. All the great warriors of that time, you know, and, 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 and holy men, uh, 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 the prophet Elijah killed all the, these supporters of Baal, 
because the Holy Spirit came upon him. We take him everywhere we go. But we deny the power. We deny the power. Oh, I just couldn't help myself. No, you didn't want to help yourself. See, that's, that's the thing. God is a gentleman. He's not going to violate your will. Matter of fact, he'll give you exactly what you want. He did it with Israel. That's why they anointed David as king. Saul's going to do it his way. God told him, gave him instructions, kill everything. He saved the choice cows and all the other stuff and, and, and the king. And Samuel had to come in. As soon as Samuel came in, he, he just looked around and saw that. He immediately took, drew his sword and killed the king. And from that point on, Saul was disqualified. Have we done some things that disqualify us? Have we done some things that disqualify us? Well, more, more I guess it was better to say that we're not disqualified, but were you ever in the game? <laughs> were you ever in the game? See, you had to be in the game to get disqualified. Now, you know, all you guys are sports fans. So, it says, all right, we walk through the valley of shadow of death. It says, I fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thank you, Lord. Now, I remember... I got bit by a dog. This guy sick this dog with me and bit me in my leg. And my older brother, Lindsay, put the word out. I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you. He told my cousins. Then my cousin said, we looking for you. I had backup. I was about 10 years old. Oh, do you know this? The individual that did that called, I don't know how he got my phone number, called my house, well, my father's house. Man, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 you know, don't you know, call him off, whatever. You know, I wasn't saved. I said, no, they're going to kill you. <laughs> they're going to get you. Point blank. <laughs> they're going to get you. And that's what God will do for us. Sometimes you don't have to, they don't, he don't have to say that. Just his very presence is intimidating. It's just intimidating. And when we let his presence show in us, there's no need to fear evil. Come on. It's going to avoid you. Just like he did Jesus when, 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 when he was uh, uh, confronting the, 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 the demon, that was demon-possessed man and First thing they want to know, what you got to do with us, Jesus? We just hanging out. We ain't doing nothing. Leave us alone. That's what will happen to you. Evil will avoid you. It says, for thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Those are just tools of a, tools of a shepherd. The rod to protect from predators, a staff to, when we get dumb as a sheep and go wandering off and they have to pull us out the mud, he can put the hook on us and pull us out. But you know, sometimes all the things that David went through, all the things that we've gone through, and I know it don't feel good, we shed tears, we cry, we, 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 we just, we, we'd be sorrowful. But I'm here to tell you that that's what makes you who you are in relationship with God the Father. You would never know how good he is if you, if you never went through nothing. Amen. You wouldn't know that he was a good shepherd unless you needed one. Yeah. See, we all want that. We want the blessings without the struggles. Ah. Now. We want the blessings without the struggles. But it's in the struggles that we appreciate the blessing. Wow. 
when we give our kids too much, because you know how we feel. I, I, uh, I never had that as a young person, so I'm, I'm going to give Well, maybe you didn't have it for a reason. Maybe you, maybe your family didn't have any money, but it could be that you couldn't handle it. You would take it for granted. I know which one Christmas, they got us everything. We played for the toys for a week. For one week. And they done spent all this money, time, and effort. So we have to teach, God has to teach us the value of his blessings. And again, that's pain. That can be painful. So, but they, but these these tools of, of, of that God uses, that our shepherd uses, they give me comfort. Why? Because I know He's got my back. I know He has my best interest at heart. It may not. Well, I just we heard it in, in class today. He said, "Well, sometimes it says our parents you say this is going to hurt me more than it's hurt you." And I believe it hurts God's heart to have to discipline us because sometimes even the sheep had the sheep had to if it's going out and keeps going out the shepherd would break his leg mm. mend it up now you can't go nowhere maybe you got a favorite a favorite sin that you like well he might just cause it that whatever that sin is you can't do it no more physically you can't do it no more now he ain't take your life but he's going to keep you from doing what you was doing we we, 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 we we have to think deeper. Like I said, give these, these, these biblical characters human emotions because they had them. They're human. So with that in verse 4, God meets our emotional needs. Because see, we have a, a high priest that is well acquainted with our frailties. He understands. He understands what it means to be hungry. He understands what it means to be lonely. He understands all the things that we go through. That's the best part about our Lord and Savior is that he came in flesh and muscle. He, oh yeah, he got tired. He got hungry. He needed food. He, everything we needed, he needed. And yet, without sin, he didn't do anything to get that, get those things. Because I just told someone today, this morning, I said, you know, I'm so glad that the Lord found me that, uh, because if it was up to me, and I wasn't saved, I'm going to get mine. <laughs> I'm not going without. And that's the attitude that many of us have that aren't saved. And some of us that do, that are saved, we're not willing to wait on the Lord. No, I'm going to get it. And it winds up biting us in the rear end. And he's got to pull our fat out the fire. He has to take that hook and pull us out the, out the, out the mud again, wash us off. But he's good like that. Just like that. See, he's good like that. And in verse 5, it says, Thou dost prepare a table for, before me in the presence of my enemies. The world don't like y'all. You can tell, you know, prices don't went up and every, everything's happening to affect our daily life. But no, nobody here looks malnutrition to me. You still eating? It may not be what you want, but it's what you need. We ain't sitting up under a bridge. We got a home. So it, 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 it in the presence of our enemies, that means they have no power, no sway over what happens to me. And it says, 
Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. God just don't give you just enough. He causes it to overflow. It's going to spill over. It's going to get on some other people. It's going to get on some other situations. This, this situation he clears up. Guess what? That's, it's going to affect this too. I remember when I got, first got saved the, and, 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 and the first people that really recognized the change in me were my children. Like, wow. He didn't go off. He talked to me. Yeah, I still got spanking, but they used to say, yeah, Dad, you used to spank us and come in there and try to exp you know, and explain. I said, because I wanted, to, I wanted you to understand that I did it because I loved you. I told him, I said, look, if I didn't care nothing about you, I'd let you do whatever you want. Just don't affect me. My life, make my life more difficult. Because raising children ain't for cowards. <laughs> ain't for cowards. Amen. But guess what? Our God is no coward. He will raise you. He will, he will give you what you need when you need it. Mm -hmm. Whether it be blessings or discipline, which is a blessing. We don't think so at the time. So, says he prepares a table before me to present my enemies. God will meet our physical needs. Yes, our bodies get sick. I always tell somebody, how you doing? I'm good. This body's acting up. Because the word says, outer man perishes, but the inner man is being renewed every day. That's who you are. This, this thing here, this, whatever this is, and it's dirt. It's got to go back from whence it came. Because it can't get into heaven. It's flesh and blood can't get into heaven. But a lot of the stuff that affects our body is because we didn't take care of it. We abused it. And in verse 6, it says, surely. Surely, surely. Now, surely, what does that mean? You can take this to the bank. You can take this to the bank. That goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. But you know the reason, only reason that David could say that? Because he acknowledged God as Lord. So the question I want to say right now at this point, is he Lord of your life or part of your life? You know, it's like he don't like a liar and a half truth is a lie. I know we're in the process, y'all sanctification, so that we might glorify God. But you ever wonder why you still stuck where you at? And I've said this before, God don't promote like public high school do. They ain't trying to, he ain't trying to get rid of you. He's trying to elevate you. And, 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 and we resist And you know what, it, what, what the big ironic thing is? It's an open book test. Just open the book. Just open the book. <laughs> but then six goes on to say, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Wow, that's a promise. God meets our eternal needs. He made a way for us, God made a way for us to get back to him. 
See, we forget that really the, this, this, this whole thing that we're going, that we're, 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 this journey we're on is to restore what was lost. To make it all pristine as it was in the beginning in the garden. That's what this is all about. So that man can have fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. So we want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But there's only one way. Through his son. Only one way. I've told people, say, I say, look, you know what? There's pl going to be plenty of good people in hell that act more Christian-like than we do. But it ain't about what you do. It's about who you know. It's about who you know. And, and the thing is, it's, the same, it's, it's, it's really the same thing on, you know, on, 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 on this side in history. See, so many of us yeah, believe that, yeah, God's taking care of my eternal destination. Well, he, he, he can take care of you in history, too. On this side. On this side. It ain't, it is ain't, it ain't, it's just not the sweet by and by. It's the here and now. It's the here and now. So as we read and study the word, let's understand that these people that are mentioned in, 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 in the Bible, they have emotions. They're, they're human beings just like you and I. They're flesh and blood like you and I. The only one that was special in the book is Jesus. <laughs> He's the only one that's special. Only one that's special. Because he lived his life perfectly. I can't say that. And you can't say that. And anybody does, the truth ain't in them. The truth ain't in them. So we can't act like I'm all that in a bag of chips. We can't look. That's why we can't judge nobody. Because if I judge you, I'm, I'm guilty of something. And in the Old Testament economy, the, 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 if you break one law, you broke them all. You know the rich young ruler, he says, well, I've kept the law since I was a child. He lied. He lied. So let us, as I close, let us stop trying to run our own ship, be the captain of our, our own ship. You know, he says, well, you know, what is it? Jesus is my co-pilot. No. He's not the pilot. He's, he's the ride. You know, I'm, I'm sitting back. This is, he's an autonomous car that drives itself, and I'm just along for the ride. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm just along for the ride. But unless you trust him, you're going to keep your hand on the handle in case something goes wrong. I'm going to bail. No. Hey, I got my seatbelt on. It's called goodness and mercy. And I'm, I'm along for the ride. Take me where you want me to be. Even if I don't want to go, take me anyway. So uh, that's all God gave me. I, I pray it helps someone. Now, if you want to have what David had for yourself, and, that, and that's what it is, we get comfort from this, 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 this passage, but that's David's testimony. What's yours? This is David's. It still makes us feel good and, 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 and all that, but you got to have one for yourself. You got to have one for yourself. And the only way you can do that is that you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's why when Maria and the, the choir is saying, it touches me because I know what it did for me. I don't know what it's done for you. I pray, I, I hope it was as good or not better, but I know what he did for me. And I'm thankful. 
I'm thankful. So if you want to have the word affect you, you may not cry. I'm a crier. You may not cry. But you may just shout, get up and just shout. You may, you may get up and dance. Whatever the Holy Spirit causes you to do. Now, the only thing the Holy Spirit won't do, he won't make you act unseemly. You ain't going to be jumping benches. Let him have his way. That's what when you come in, I mean, I love it when I see the spirit moving in this place. Amen. I love it. Because it, the word tells us that we are supposed to be boisterous about it. You know, and again, I'll use you sports fans. Y'all go down in that stadium, boy, and y'all act a fool. Y'all will act a plum fool. You will paint your face. You'll be out there in freezing weather. Come on. But you sit here like as quiet as a church mouse. Well. So I'm here to tell you, I'm going to praise him. Hold up y'all. But it is... We have elders and deacons and ministers here. If you want to surrender your life to Christ, they can help you. They can guide you. See, you know, God don't need our help. He desires our help. Because when we help one another, we build relationships with each other. I want you to know me as well as I can get to know you. That's relationship. But that re our relationships are dependent on our relationship with Christ. So if you need to be guided and helped if you don't know what to do, we have these leaders here. Or if you just want to have prayer, allow them to minister to you on the area that you need. So is there anyone? Is there anyone? The Bible says... Confess your sins one to another. I know you don't want nobody in your business, but God already knows. That's why I say you ain't got no business, because God already knows. And if, and if we belong to him, our business is his business, and his business is our business. Someone here. Tomorrow ain't promised. All God wants you to do is bring your issues to Him. He'll do the rest. Now, some things may take a you know, it's on God's timetable. It's not on ours. I know we want the pain. We want the hurt. We want all that to stop right now. But maybe you ain't learned the lesson that you need to learn yet. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love. Because if you're anything like me, you can be hard-headed. That's why we need a shepherd. We're sheep. We have to admit we're sheep. We lean to our own understanding instead of li living uh, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I've got trouble instead of pain. There's beauty. I've got joy instead of mourning. Cause you give me joy 
down deep in my soul down deep in my soul down deep in my soul you give me joy down deep in my soul down deep in my soul down deep in my soul you give me joy down deep in my soul down deep in my soul down deep in my soul you give me joy down deep in my soul down deep in my soul down deep in my soul there's beauty in my brokenness i've got true love instead of pain there's freedom though you've captured me i've got joy instead of mourning there's beauty in my brokenness come on now come on i've got true love instead of pain there's freedom though you've captured me i've got joy instead of mourning you give cause you give me joy down deep in my soul down deep in my soul down deep in my soul you give me joy down deep in my soul down deep in my soul down deep in my soul you give me joy down deep in my soul down deep in my soul heavenly father we come now Us. We come before you, Father, to, just to thank you, just to say thank you, Lord God, but more than that, we want to show you our gratitude, not just tell you, but to show you by surrendering to you afresh every morning we wake up, Lord, that we say, whatever it is you have for me, Lord, let it be done. Send me. Father, I ask a blessing upon this congregation, Lord God. I'm not going to pray for numerical increase, Lord. I'm praying for spiritual increase. I'm praying for obedience increase. I'm praying for, for the love to increase. one for another, and most of all, one with you. Father, we know that uh, we got a long way to go, but you, you didn't bring us this far to let us go now. Your word says that you shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So Father, we just touch and agree with you. Have your way today, tomorrow, and forever in our lives. And it's Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. At this time of worship, we will prepare for communion. All the leaders ministers, the deacons, the uh, elders, please come up front as we prepare for communion. Anyone who is watching virtually, please have your elements available as we prepare for this sacred remembrance of who Jesus is and what he's done for each and every one of us. Mr. Orr, bless the uh, offering.
offering first. Heavenly Father, we come now to ask your blessing on these elements. We ask a blessing on the bread, which is representative of the body of Christ, Lord, that was beaten and battered for our transgressions. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Then, Father, we want to bless the cup, which is representative of his blood, which was shed for the remission of our sins. Allow it to not just cover us, Lord, but to saturate us, penetrate us to the very core, to, the, to our marrow, Lord God, that you may receive the glory and our sins will be washed away. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. I just want to say as we begin here, he says, therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat uh, the Lord's Supper, for in eating, it takes his own supper ahead of others. Uh, if one is hungry and another one is drunk, what do you have to the house to eat or drink? Or do you despise the church of God? Uh, shame those who have, a, who have nothing. What <clears throat> shall I say to you? I say praise you uh, in this. I do not praise you. And now we have the Lord's Supper. It says, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered uh, to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and he had given thanks and he broke it and said, take, eat this. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after, after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen.
Has everyone received their elements? If you have not received your elements, if you are a baptized believer, please raise your hand. We have ushers. Pass them out to you. As was read in scripture, it said that Jesus' body was bruised. It was beaten. And this bread represents Jesus' body that was bruised and beaten for each and every one of us. As uh, what, what Minister, Ed, uh, Minister Orr said, that Jesus knew why he, what, why he came, and he knew how his body was going to be bruised, how his body was going to be beaten. And he still went through it for each and every one of us. Let's all eat this bread together. And not only did Jesus know that his body was going to be bruised and beaten, but he also knew that blood needed to be shed for the remission of our sins. And this juice, this juice represents the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for each and every one of us. Let us all drink, drink together. And every time we do communion, we do it as often as we, as we can. And we do it in remembering what our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has done for us. We should be thankful that we have a God that loves us so much that he would allow his body to go through bruising and beating and piercing and, and nailing. And he did it just for each and every one of us. Let us all sing. Heavenly Father, dear Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, for being our shepherd. We thank you for protecting us. We thank you for guiding us. Father, as we go through this week, continue just to guide us and protect us, Father. Continue just to watch over us, for we know that you'll never leave us or forsake us, Father. As we leave this place throughout this week, whatever issues, whatever problems, whatever afflictions that we're going through, Father, we know that you will be there to, uh, to, uh, to guide us. Allow us to look at you and not look at the problems because we know that you are bigger than every problem that, that is around us, Father. Father, we just continue just to uh, bless us, continue to keep us, continue to allow your face to shine upon us, Father. Continue to lift us in your countenance, Father, and also continue to give us peace. And we say these prayers in your darling Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you.